Alrighty race fans, welcome to another edition of the workbench. Well, it's a big, big day here at the shop. Uh, we got some new parts in. It's taken a while to get these things together. Um, but that's the way things are. So, uh, with no further ado, we'll get right into it. Alright, so, a couple things here. We've got some new pickup shoe hangers and some new pickup shoes. Uh, first off, I'm going to talk about the hanger. Um, over time, uh, these style of cars have always kind of relied on some iteration of the Tommy Turbo SRT Super G Plus uh, shoe hanger design. That original design was not uh, can't say it wasn't well thought out because it was. It wasn't exactly uh, optimized for uh, high performance applications. So those early cars, guys that were racing them would have to do a number of tweaks. They might have to uh, shave the bottom of the hanger, uh, give it a little bit of a forward bend. We'll talk about that here in a minute. And a number of other things. Um, a number of companies have made hangers over time, including you know myself, Viper, BSRT, but we've always kind of done just kind of a standard hanger design with a short uh, retracted uh, window for the uh, heel hook of the pickup shoe to uh, stick in. And that's actually been good, but there's been a couple of other little things with that that we'll talk about. And I um, have to get... Uh, our uh, visual aid. So, as you see, here's the outline of the hanger. And most of the time, this little window here for the hanger has always kind of come down straight. Okay? Um, in the real world for racing applications even you know when I started club racing probably near 15 years ago one of the things that we would have to do with any of the shoe hangers was, was manually bend this this piece here that was straight give it a little bit of a forward kink and the reason why you do that is it tends to keep the pickup shoe locked in the car um, during a crash or some other event and it's okay when you're building, you know, one or two cars at a time, but when you're really trying to do production work, it's it's a real time sink to do that. So, for a number of years now, I've wanted to design a, a hanger that uh, already was pre-bent, so you didn't have to do that. And I think we've uh, met some success here uh, this week. So, I don't know if we can actually grab one of these things to where you can see that or not. I don't think the autofocus is going to catch that. Let's see if it does. No, autofocus can't grab that. But anyway, what that little Ben does is it pushes this bottom part of the uh, hanger window forward and that helps lock this heel hook of the pickup shoe into the car because a lot of times when the pickup shoe is compressed if something happens and the shoe moves forward it'll unhook out of that window and just pop out so when you give it that little bit of a forward kink when this shoe is compressed, it doesn't really want to. It doesn't want to come out easily. Um, you got to get some little manipulator and uh, kind of, you know, you know, kind of stretch it a little bit and pop the shoe out. All right, and another thing that uh, we did with the design is we gave the part. A mild heat treat and what that does is it stiffens the material up and kind of makes it a little bit springier but it doesn't um, 
it doesn't collapse as easy. Uh, a lot of times the process of putting these hangers in, I'll demonstrate here in a, just give me a second here. Undo that. I mean the process of getting the hanger in, you stick it in and kind of force it in like that. It has to kind of go in at an angle. But the process of putting those in a lot of times will uh, cause this hanger to kind of open up and when it does it loses its tension against the end bell of either like the Viper, BSRT, or these can motor cars and then this shoe will sit there and wiggle around a little bit and not have good contact so I, uh, I had this lot heat treated uh, a little bit to give it a little bit more stiffness so we've already got a pre-tweaked window at the bottom with a forward tweak we've got it heat treated and you know I put a bunch of cars together with these things here and it was really really good uh, I didn't feel any any tension release of these as I put them in the car and they they really provide once once these things are in properly they actually when when you put the motor or the end bell into the car it uh, they the shoes don't have a tendency to kind of want to uh, stretch or excuse me, the hangers don't, don't have a tendency to want to stretch and open up a little bit and lose tension. So it's it's really uh, been good. I'm very, very pleased with it. All right, so let's uh, talk about the shoes a little bit. All right, one of the problems on these uh, what I call fat tire cars that generally have a large diameter front end set is the the standard style Tomy shoe this was designed to not float but to hinge back here I mean once it's in the car uh, this doesn't move off the window it just acts as a fulcrum point and it hinges and that's what has to happen when you have a lot of shoe travel in one of these cars when you get into um, you know Viper BSRT where you're running you know, 340 front end sets and the car is very low, you can run low profile pickup shoes, ski shoes at that, uh, and get a lot of good performance. These kinds of shoes here, if you put them on a car with a low front end, the car will run, but yeah, your performance is going to be pretty bad. So another thing that I was wanting to try to do is get away from these cantilever style shoes and get a ski shoe for these cars and the the point is you can see you get contact from the back to the front that's really really important and you know this is I can't say this is a first for the hobby I think a number of years ago BSRT had some long travel ski shoes but he probably ran out. I haven't seen any more in the marketplace. And you know, with with Viper, uh, with our project, everybody's running low front end sets, either Independence or O-rings or whatever. And there's no been no call for a ski style shoe, you know, in a long travel. Well, with the um, reimagination of Tommy SRT with the Bulldog. And then my Super 7, there's been a lot of these cars that, you know, guys want to run the fat tires up front to get the looks. But that also raises the front end up, which means you need a long travel shoe. So we sat down and designed a shoe, which basically you, you get your travel back here at this hook in the back end. This is really where the extra, um, the extra material is, is right here in this heel hook back here. This is it, it's up a lot, so it gives the uh, the shoe uh, the ability to float. And we may try to demonstrate what that's about here in a second. We'll try to do that. But the end result is the shoes wearing really, really good front to back. All right, so maybe we can demonstrate the floating shoes here. Um, I'm going to move the car back and forth on this tech block. 
and I want you to see if you can see that the shoes tend to stay in place a little bit. And what what's going on here, I don't know if you can see it down there or not, but when you put the car on the track and then the car goes forward, the shoe sort of un I can't say it unlocks, but it uh floats in the uh, hanger window which is what you want and the shoe is pushed back into the hanger well when you have that float condition then the shoe has the uh, ability to ride on the rail and get that perfect burn pattern front to rear so now that you understand what's going on, uh, we'll go back to our drawing. The window yeah, you know, is obviously going this way, and that heel hook of that shoe is coming into there, but when that thing's floating, it that hook unloads off of that bottom part of that window. And that's really, I think, um, a combination, maybe some handling factors that go into that. Uh, certainly the uh, shoe's ability to get perfect contact, that's the entire idea of the process. And so far, I think we've met with a lot of success. So let's talk about uh, installation of these shoes. All right, with the old school style step shoe that are not really what I would consider performance parts, the old thing was you just kind of get it in there and then mash it across the top of the of the tab and it just pops on um, that isn't the way that you do these shoes okay it just causes too much problems and gets the shoes out of whack so what you need to do oh, here we go find a spring I'll stick a spring in there and then you'll need a pair of tweezers or something and what you need to do with these shoes any ski shoes in my opinion on any any chassis either these long travel standard travel and especially short travel is you fish that shoe across that tab first okay get it there I'll hold it in place with my finger which I can't exactly demonstrate to you on the next step but maybe maybe I'll try get it held in there and then I get my tweezer and then BAM push it down and pop it in like that that doesn't stretch the shoe if you try to put the heel in first and then press this thing over that tab you run the risk of putting a belly in the shoe okay now I've seen tens of thousands of pickup shoes in my time either selling them putting them on cars whatever it is a, about an impossibility for these things to get made perfectly flat you can try and some of some companies do a better job than others but even today, even today in the marketplace, you look at ski shoes, you'll get some that aren't perfectly flat and they have to be tweaked. I mean, you just talk to the Frey guys on what they do with their T-Jets for Frey racing and all the tweaking that they do with the standard shoes that they get. Um, I mean, they understand it. No, no shoe is perfect for any particular chassis and you have to work on it to get it to ride absolutely perfect. And when you do that and you and you get the shoes to ride flat and burn perfectly, well, reasonably even front to rear, you get your most electrical contact. So what you gotta do sometimes. Let's just pop on another shoe real quick. Put a hand on the front. Get on there straight. There we go. Come on, come on. 
there we go, is you may have to get your shoe tweaking tool or make one or something and if the shoe has a belly in it what you got to do sometimes maybe put your finger right there and get your tweaker in here and kind of tweak that belly out okay you got to run a lap or two look at it because if it's got a belly you'll get a burn mark here and a burn mark up here and nothing in the middle so you you run a couple of laps you know give it a little tweak and you're trying to kind of get that belly back out of the shoe and you know these here these worked out pretty good right out of the box I didn't have to do anything to them now one thing you have to understand with this style hanger and pickup shoe system your pickup shoe spring is right here okay and that's where all the pressure is and I don't care what platform, you know, BSRT, Viper, the Super 7, Bulldog, Super G Plus, Tommy Turbo SRT, anything that's running a ski style shoe, you have more pressure back here from that spring than up here. And this back part will start to wear heavily before this part. That's okay. It'll, you can't get rid of that. And you don't even want to try to do that. Your goal, though, is to get a burn pattern front to rear. Um, and if you race a lot or, or even just use your cars a lot, you'll see that the groove will start wearing in back here, and then it'll start wearing towards the front. Um, and eventually, if you don't change your shoes soon enough, you'll develop a little hole right here, and as that shoe keeps on wearing, that 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 cut will go right on up. I mean, I saw a guy wear his shoes out. He ran them till he couldn't run them anymore, and they were completely cut through from the back of this heel hook all the way up to the front window here, and they were, I think, maybe low travel shoes. So the only thing holding the shoe together was the top of this strap here, okay, and the bottom of the hook. I mean, it literally, he ran it till it wouldn't run anymore. So, you can run these shoes a long time, um, but, you know, in certain applications, that, that groove after a point, if it gets too deep, that can affect handling, um, but it's gotta be pretty deep for that to happen. But generally, if your shoes are, you know, you've got a gully about halfway up, let's just say, between back here and up here, your gully is only wearing up to about there. Okay, then replace them there. Okay, that, that, that's probably a good rule of thumb. All right, so one, one last little visual aid here. Here's a HCS low travel shoe. And we're gonna put this on the car, fish it through the front. Hold it with our finger. Oh, our spring came out. Pop it back in. So guys, I ain't perfect either, right? I can do better when I'm sitting down and I'm not having to talk to a camera. Get that in there, come here. All right. So what I wanna do here on this particular situation is to kind of give you an idea of the difference between a, a long travel and a short travel in the car. So hopefully you can see that. Um, I apologize for not having the best camera work in the world, but you know, it's just me. So if you look here, let's turn this, let's do this here. Maybe that'll be better. You can see now how much travel you got back here, how much drop you got back here when that shoe compresses. Okay, then on the short travel shoe, you can see that there's really not a whole lot of heel hook back here. So when you got this compressed, you know, the front end of the car obviously is a lot lower. Okay, so if this is an extreme example, but if you try to run, say, short travel shoes on a fat tire car, 
it may not even work because there is also uh, some mechanical differences up here. You've got a lot more uh, material up here than you do in a short shoe. So it's possible you could put this thing on the track and the, f the front would maybe hit the rail, maybe not. But it the car might run, but you'd, you'd never ever get a solid burn path. So the whole idea behind these short, standard, and long travel shoes is depending upon the tire size of the car, okay, you get a pickup shoe that rides in an optimum spot. So I think I've talked about this before with uh, cars with like say a 340 front end set which is pretty typical for uh, a standard Viper V-Spec and anything similar like that would run on the O-rings. Uh, you can run a low shoe with anything say 340 and smaller. Um, anything say 340 to 360 you need a standard travel shoe because once you start getting larger than 340 then this part of the shoe no longer really touches the rail you start you start running up here and that's you're not getting anywhere so then a standard travel shoe would come in say 340 to 360 and then anything bigger than 360 you need a long travel shoe and these fat tire cars let's see where we're at these are measuring out at 385 okay so 385 if you're running up to say 400 which would be stupid in a car like this but if you were you might have to end up getting you know something like a step shoe and then tweaking it even more to get any sort of contact um, these cars right here they're just not made to really run anything much bigger than this sort of front end set which is kind of typical size for srt turbo super g plus that that's really about the outside of it because if you get the front end too high then you lose a lot of magnetism in the motor box and your handling will just be terrible because then you're barely hanging on by your traction magnets. The motor magnets aren't helping you out any. So anyway, that's uh, that's kind of the rundown on the new parts, the new uh, heat treated pro hanger. Uh, really nice. I'm exceedingly pleased in this and how well those parts came out um, with the special forward bend at the factory. You don't have to, in my opinion, you don't have to do any tweaking at all on these hangers unless you step on them and then just go get a new one. Uh, put them in the car and they should be really really good. They they should not require any any post installation tweaking like some of the other brands of shoes and hangers and whatever need to. And then our new long travel shoe, ski shoe, that has uh, the extra travel built in here so you can get away from running the infamous step shoes. Okay? Alright guys, thanks for watching.